Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Agilato. My name is Ravi Varma. I'm the founder and CEO of Smooth Apps and the Org Whisperer. Good to have you back. So as you remember, in our last in our last episode, we had just uh, closed the sale of our old home and we were settling in nicely into our new home. And our agile coach Ismar Hasanovic had taught me, who is an agile coach, how to apply the principles and practices that I teach my clients in my own real life. So let's continue the saga. So now we are moved in, we are getting nice and comfortable in our new home and it's time for housewarming. So we get all our closest family members um, and our friends and we're gonna have a housewarming uh, celebration. And my wife has got uh, you know large array of dishes and recipes that she wants to try out and she wants it to be the, the perfect housewarming with all the delicious uh, dishes that our guests can enjoy. So we start cooking and you know she starts, uh, she picked a couple of dishes, um, something, maybe something new that she wants to try out and you know she has the recipe book in front of, uh, in front of her. And here's where I tell you there's a difference between the, the attitude my wife has and I have. So I found out recently after being married to her for, uh, for a long time, I forget how long, um, was she said, you're a by the book kind of guy. So I, I didn't really look at myself that way until she said it. But yes, there are times in life where uh, if there is there are a set of instructions, I tend to stick to the rules. Uh, on the other hand, for my wife, especially when she's cooking, everything in the recipe is a gentle, mild suggestion and is up for negotiation. And there are times when she will change each and every ingredient of the recipe uh, and the only thing that she retains is the name, but everything else has been changed beyond recognition. So as she is cooking the different dishes, there are different uh, things which are simmering on the stove. Um, uh, I, I observe her as a chef and I, you know, cooking is not something that uh, I specialize in. I prefer the eating part. And there are two or three things that she seems to do on a fairly regular basis. The first thing is that she's very focused and she's constantly looking at the different dishes as they are cooking, whether they are simmering on the stove top or there's something in the, in the oven. The second thing that I observed that she did on a fairly regular basis was she was constantly tasting or, or smelling uh, and looking at how things are, how, how the different dishes are shaping up. And finally, the third thing was the moment she detected that something was not quite right, maybe there was a frown in the face and she's trying to figure out, okay, what do I add, what do I subtract? Maybe she will add a little bit of uh, some cream or maybe some sugar or a pinch of salt. And finally, when this happens often enough, the frown starts disappearing and it, can, it get changes into a smile or a, a look of satisfaction. And then she knows, okay, this is exactly the way I wanted it to be. The dish is done, she covers it and gets ready to serve it to the guests. As you look at this real world example, a very common familiar example of cooking, I want you to think about how we develop software when it comes to an agile software delivery framework. So we use a, a healthy team that follows agile software delivery framework, uh, uses some of the similar techniques as I described my wife as using when she's trying out a new recipe. So the first step was transparency. Being able to see at any given time how the food is shaping up, how it's looking, uh, what it's looking like, being able to see the food as it's being cooked on the stuffed top. The second is inspection. Inspection is smelling it, tasting it, and asking yourself the question, is this product, is this dish, or maybe is this software shaping up the way we want it to be? And the third is adaptation. The moment the dish starts heading in a direction which would not be fulfilling or tasty or delicious for our guests, the chef immediately applies some course correction and makes some adjustments by increasing or decreasing the heat, adding some sugar, maybe a pinch of salt, maybe some cream, and then repeats the cycle over and over again until the dish is exactly the right taste. In the world of agile software delivery, 
this kind of an approach is known as empirical process control. And the three pillars of empiricism are transparency, being able to see how the software is developing, inspection, testing the software to ask yourself the question, is it going in the direction we want it to, and adaptation. The moment we realize the software is going off track, we make immediate course correction before it goes to the point of no return. Now here's my question to you. What happens if any one of these pillars is neglected or is not used effectively? Let's take the cooking example. If we were cooking and we did not have transparency and we could not see how the dish was shaping up on the stuff top, what might happen? Or maybe we could see we had transparency, but we got distracted by, or maybe we did not have the flexibility to taste it, so we could see it, but we could not smell it, we could not taste it. Um, how might that impact the probability that the food is going to be delicious? Or what if we could see it, we could taste it, but we did not have the freedom to make any adjustments. We could not touch the stuff top to increase or decrease the heat or add some sugar or salt or maybe some cream. If you think about the cooking example, you pretty soon come to the conclusion that each of these three steps is very, in, very important for us to get the desired outcome when we are cooking a new dish. Exactly the same when we are, cook, when we are creating a new piece of software. So at any given point in time, our teams need to have need the ability to look at the software as it's shaping up, whether it is the code base, uh, whether it is the, the test cases that are being executed, or whether it's the actual product in a production-like environment. That is transparency. Our teams also need the ability to compare how the product is today to where they thought it should be so that we could meet our customer commitments. That is inspection. And finally, the moment our teams realize there is some deviation, maybe there are too many defects, maybe performance is slow, the UI is not the way our client or client representatives want it to be, we must immediately take course correction. If we get distracted and if we lose our sight of the ball at any different, at any of these points, at any of these stages, we are exposing our team, our customers and our business to more risk than we might be able to tolerate. So here's my question to you. As you think about this example, how do you rate your team's ability to effectively apply empirical process control? Especially if you're using agile software delivery, what is the state of transparency in your teams? What is the state of inspection? And how effectively are you adapting the course of your product and your process so that you deliver maximum value to your business? Would love to hear your feedback. Um, send me your thoughts, share your comments, uh, and try one small experiment over the next couple of weeks as a team to increase the effectiveness of empirical process control uh, in your team. Until the next episode of Agilado, uh, this is Ravi. Hope to see you soon. In the next episode, we're gonna find out about how our family prepares for ballet and why our family is constantly sipping soda uh, and it's not quite what you think. But to find out more, you gotta tune back. So tune into the next episode of Agilado and until then, this is Ravi, see you soon. So would you like fresh ideas on how to stay agile? Check out smoothapps.com. We've got our upcoming events and training. You can read our blog for free tools and techniques. And you can even schedule a free mentoring session with us. So until next time, scrum on.